Thank you. Mr. Chancellor, it is my pleasure to present to you Professor John O'Keefe, a distinguished scientist and McGill graduate who's an inspired role model and personifies one of the signature strengths of our university, the quality of our students. John O'Keefe received a BA degree from the City College of New York and then obtained an MA from McGill in 1964 and a PhD in psychology from McGill in 1967, supervised by Ron Melzack. He then went to University College London, where he's now a professor of cognitive neuroscience and director of the Sainsbury Welcome Center and head of department. In 1971, Professor O'Keefe noted that different cells would be activated in the hippocampus part of the brain as a lab rat moved around in a room. This showed that those cells, which he called place cells, were used by the brain to create an internal map of a newly visited place. This inner GPS in the brain makes it possible for rats and us to orient ourselves in space, demonstrating a cellular basis for higher cognitive function. For this and other work, Professor O'Keefe has been recognized many times. As examples, in 2013, he received the Louisa Gross Horwitz Prize with Edward Moser and Mary Britt Moser, and in 2014, he is a co-recipient of the Cavley Prize with Brenda Milner of McGill and Marcus Rakeley. Most recently, in 2014, Professor O'Keefe was awarded one half of the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine, with the other half going to Professors May Britt Moser and Edward Moser for their discoveries of cells that constitute a positioning system in the brain. To our students, I cannot say that a degree from McGill gives one a nose up for a Nobel Prize, but it doesn't hurt. The conferral and acceptance of an honorary doctorate is a reflection of shared values of the deepest nature. As a world-renowned scientist and leader, Professor O'Keefe is an inspiring role model. His association with McGill makes us proud. Mr. Chancellor, I present to you Professor John O'Keefe that you may confer upon him the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa. I now call upon Dr. John O'Keefe to deliver the convocation address. Dr. O'Keefe. Well, thank you very much, Chancellor, and thank you very much, Professor Grant, for that very kind introduction. Uh, and it goes without saying that I'm deeply honored and, and proud to receive this, this honorary doctorate from my alma mater. Um, I spent four years at McGill, and they were some of the best years of my life, uh, and some of the most important. Um, when I came here, and I was very privileged to be accepted as a student here, McGill was one of only a very small number of centers uh, where it was possible to do behavioral neuroscience. Of course, now it is still one of the great centers, but it's been joined by many other centers around the world. Um, the reason it was a great center was firstly because it had some of the, the pioneers of, of neuroscience, uh, most eminent amongst them, uh, Professor Donald Hebb, who had essentially, in his book, The Organization of Behavior, in 1949, laid out the philosophy and the fundamental principles for how one could study the brain and uh, use the, the one's findings to understand representations of uh, cognitive processes. But he wasn't the only one. There was a star-studded studied, uh, faculty. Um, there were the, the Milners, Peter Milner, who had discovered uh, the rewarding uh, stimulation of the brain uh, here at McGill. 
Brendan Milner, who in fact was very influential in, in my, my, uh, my whole uh, career, because she had studied a patient with damage to the part of the brain that I studied, the hippocampus, and shown that he had a profound memory deficit. And that was very influential. Uh, and I remember going across the, the frozen campus from the psychology department to the MNI uh, on those wintry days. Uh, nobody could stop us. That was one of the highlights of being here. Um, and last but not least, my, my uh, research advisor, Professor Ron Melzack, who already was one of the world's experts on pain. Um, Ron, I have to say, was, was a fantastic research supervisor, as were all of, of, of the, the staff. Um, he was very encouraging and very generous, and he had just gotten a large grant, and he allowed me to build what was then, for many, many years, the best lab that I had. Even after I left McGill and got my own grants, it was um, very, uh, it was one of the best laboratories that I, have, I ever had. Um, McGill in those days, as I'm sure is still the case, um, and particularly in psychology, had an electrifying atmosphere. Um, we felt then that we were uh, participating in the, the dawning of a new science, the science of, of neuroscience. Um, and particularly important, we were given the resources and the freedom to actually explore ideas, some of which sounded crazy at the time uh, and have panned out some of them actually were crazy at the time. Um, and we learned not only from our uh, teachers, but also from postdoctoral students and from our colleagues at the time. And I have made, as I'm sure many of you have made, uh, some of the best friends uh, of a lifetime uh, here at, at McGill. Um, postdoctorals were particularly important. Uh, and some of the postdoctorals I interacted with went on to brilliant careers. One of them became head of neurology at Michigan. Another one is the head of, 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 uh, of uh, uh, perception at Phillips in, 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 in Holland. And um, Roy Pritchard went on to become a professor at McMaster. While I was here, I have to say, I formulated many of the ideas and developed many of the techniques which enabled me, when I went to UCL, to study the hippocampus and, and, and to, um, and to uh, do the research for which I uh, 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 eventually uh, received the Nobel Prize. McGill did act as a springboard um, uh, for, for my later career. Um, and I have to also say that coming to Montreal was, was terrific. Uh, then, as now, it was an exciting, vibrant city. It was great to have two cultures, the English culture and the French culture, and I, I really profited tremendously from that. I lived in the square mile and uh, developed a, a lifelong habit of trying to live as close to my work as possible, and I still do. I've been able to do that in, 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 in London. I also got married while I was here, and we conceived our first child, who was born in England when we went there. And we started a kind of a lifelong uh, habit of, of my family and my wife's family coming to McGill. Both of, of her nephews came here to do degrees. Uh, and I think they did that uh, certainly uh, uh, as part of our experience when we were here. So just in conclusion, thinking back over the last 50 years, and I, I have to say sometimes it, it seems like just a moment, um, one thinks about paths that one didn't take. One thinks about uh, regrets one might have had. Um, and, and, and I have to say, never for a moment have I ever uh, regretted uh, coming to McGill. It was a, a fantastic uh, springboard. It was a fantastic path to, to, to follow. And uh, many of the paths uh, and, and uh, areas of study that I, I, I have subsequently taken had their origins in McGill. So let me end by saying I'm proud to have spent my formative years here. Uh, I congratulate all of you who have gotten your degrees for having uh, spent your formative years here, and I'm sure you will look back as I do uh, on these years as some of the finest of your, your uh, uh, life. Um, I'm grateful for the opportunity that was given to me by McGill, and I'm honored to receive this uh, honorary degree. Thank you for your attention.